How do you become a more consistent player? Well, I got some ideas. Let's take a look. All right, you wanna be a more consistent player. Who doesn't, right? Uh, the easy way to do that is experience and talent. Unfortunately, I can't teach that over a YouTube channel, but what I can tell you and what I can teach you is some little tricks that can help get you uh, there quicker, right? So there's kind of two pillars to this. There's the shot routine fundamentals pillar, and then there's like the mental pillar. And I know the mental game isn't really something that often comes up with consistency, but hear me out. So like I said, there's two pillars. There's the, the shot routine fundamentals, and then the mental, and some that are right in the middle. So we'll start with the mental because it doesn't sound very obvious. So we'll just start there. So one of the most important parts of consistency to me, and probably in a lot of people's minds, is confidence. Confidence that you can make that shot. Confidence that you can beat that person. Confidence that you can run out. Confidence that you can win the tournament. Confidence is king, but it's really, really easy to confuse confidence and cockiness or to go from confident to cocky. And um, there's a really, really good mental game book called The Inner Game of Tennis. And I don't play tennis, never have, but I read the book and everything from that applies to pool. And in that book, one of the major key um, points that they make is you don't want to get too high or too low. You want to get, you want to stay even keeled. So let's say um, you make a great shot. You don't want to brag about it. You don't want to be cocky about it. You want to be confident and carry that onto your next shot, but you don't want to be inter out externally cocky or even internally cocky. You want to stay confident. You know, if, if you, let's say you beat a great player in the first round of a tournament, don't make a Facebook post about it. That's only going to be, it's only going to take your confidence up to cockiness and that's where we fall off real quick. So we don't want to get too high, but we also don't want to get too low. Let's say we lose to a player we're not supposed to lose to and then we get low, we get real low. Now you start over analyzing everything and now you can't make a ball and you're in a slump for two weeks. Stay even keel. You miss a shot, I'll make the next one. You make a shot, great, move on. Stay even keels. And that's probably one of the bigger takeaways from that book that I got. Uh, so I just saved you, you know, a, a day's worth of reading to, 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 from there. But there's another part of that book that I thought was interesting, and it kind of ties together the mental part and the fundamental part. And, you know, in that book, they don't talk about the fundamentals or any kind of, um, you know, fundamental part of playing tennis. But what they do talk about is how... Uh, they train actors to play a tennis role in a movie. And they t it talks about how they didn't have to train, they didn't try to train the actor or teach the actor how to be a good tennis player. They only taught the actor how to look like a good tennis player. And the results they found <laughs> were, like, were kind of crazy that the, the actor actually became a decent tennis player just by looking the part, by just looking and holding the position the right way, because they're, they're not talking about, you know, the, the strategy and the what you're supposed to do with tennis. They're only talking about how you're supposed to look. And oddly enough, it kind of applies to pool too. So if you go to a, like a pro tournament and you're watching pros for the day, the next day you're going to play probably pretty good because you're seeing a lot of things and your brain's processing them and you're mimicking what you see. So long story short, if you just try to emulate some of those top players, some of those 800 Fargo players like a Federer Gorst, if you just try to like, let's say you had to play him in a movie, if you just did what he did, your game is probably going to rise a little bit. And because he's so fundamentally strong, all of those 800 Fargo players are so fundamentally strong that if you just do what they're doing, that you're going to have pretty good fundamentals just by acting like them. But 
the fundamentals. So we get back to the fundamentals. Now we, we talked about the mental, we talked about a little bit in between with that, but now we're gonna get into the shot routine. So this is where real consistency comes from because uh, you wanna do this in practice. You wanna do this every single shot. You want a, so there's a shot routine. The, the shot routine is a pre-shot routine, a post-shot routine. The pre-shot is everything leading up to hitting the ball. The post-shot is everything after following through. So it's just the shot routine is those two parts. And if you are doing your shot routine, your pre-shot routine, you want to do the same thing every single time, whether you're practicing, whether you're playing for free, whether you're playing for a million dollars. Every single shot, no matter how hard or how easy it is, you want to do the exact same thing the exact same way. That's how we become consistent by doing the same thing the same way and just not worrying about how hard the shot is. Just worry about shooting the ball straight. Worry about hitting the ball where you're supposed to hit it. Do the same thing every time. So let's dive into a pre-shot routine and a post-shot routine and let's talk about uh, how we can incorporate, incorporate that into your game. All right, we talked about the mental part of it and some of the fundamentals and just you know trying to replicate what you see from a great player. But now we're gonna talk about the shot routine part. And that is a very, very key component towards consistency is doing your shot routine the same way every time, no matter what, if you're practicing at home or if you're playing for a dollar or you're playing in league, you're playing for fun, you're playing a friend, you're playing your, your boss, or you're playing for a million dollars and it's the shot to win the game. Every shot is the same. Treat them all the same. Treat them all with the same level of respect. Don't overthink them. Don't underthink them. Treat them all with the same level of respect. Now, that goes into the shot routine. So a lot of people, a lot of times you'll hear about the pre-shot routine, but I think it's more than that. It's, it's the pre-shot and the post-shot. So the, the shot routine is, you're, everyone has slightly different shot routines, but there's, there's some things that are pretty consistent. And one of those things is stepping into the shot. So I'll go through my shot routine and I'll talk you through the steps that I'm going through in my head. And you know, I do it so often that I don't have to go through the steps, but you know, I'll, I'll just tell you what I'm doing. So you know, we have a pretty basic shot here, but I stand right here, I find the, the aim line. Then I come over here and I find the shot line. So the shot line goes all the way through the ball, as far as the eye can see, and then also behind me and onto the floor. That's the shot line. So now, if I just shoot straight through the shot line, I'm supposed to make this ball. If I don't make this ball, it's because I didn't shoot straight through the shot line. Or I aimed wrong, and I probably am not gonna aim this wrong. So right here's my shot line. My pre-shot routine starts like this. I, find my, I got my, my aim line, find my shot line, do a little overlap, whatever, whatever aiming system you want, whatever flavor of aiming system you like. This is my line. I step on the line, my grip hand is on the line over my foot, and I fall into the shot, I settle, I go one, two, I pause at the cue ball, lock in where I want to hit it, back, pause, fire through, and then I pause for the photographer that isn't actually there. That sounds crazy, but I'll explain. So the part of this pre-shot routine or this full shot routine uh, most of that stuff you can customize. You can do what you want. You can you can have uh, two, you know, two pro, uh, warm up strokes. You can have five warm up strokes. You can do one, whatever it is. Just do the same thing every time. What's comfortable for you? Let's say your, your normal is two warm up strokes, and you do two, and you catch yourself doing a third. Stand up, start over. Stand up, get down. I normally do two. I go one, two. Three, oh, all right, stand up, reset. Now it's time to reset because you've just broken your routine. You don't wanna do that. You don't wanna take the chance. Even on an easy shot, you wanna do the same thing every shot. Find the, the aim line, find the shot line, step on the line, grip hand over the line, 
lock in. One, two, pause, back pause, follow through, pause for the photographer. So I'll explain some of that stuff. So like I said, stepping into the shot line, everyone should do that 100%. Always step on the, the shot line, always uh, fall into the shot line, walk into the shot line. That's, that's a, that's a no-brainer, everyone does that. But how many practice strokes you do, if you're looking at the cue ball ass, the object ball ass, that's all personal preference. Pros do it a lot of different ways. Some pros do six practice strokes, some do one or two. Some look at the cue ball ass, some look at the object ball ass. It's really up to you. But stepping into the shot is what every pro does. It's the, the basis of consistency. And just doing this every time is the other you know, really just foundation of consistency is doing it every single time to the point that it becomes just second nature and you're gonna do it forever the same way. And if you catch yourself breaking your routine, stand up, stand back, reset and get back into your routine. So, so yeah, that's, the, I mean, that's to me where you build your consistency is through the mental approach of uh, being consistent or being uh, confident and um, just looking the part. And then we have to do your pre-shot and post-shot routine and uh, doing it the same every time. How many times have you seen this where you got like a real easy shot and you know, you're playing, you're feeling good and then you just get down, you're not really thinking and then you miss an easy shot and you're like, oh, you, you know, I make all the hard shots and then I miss the easy shots. How many times have you heard someone say, I make all the hard shots and I miss all the easy shots? Well, because you're not being consistent. You're not doing a pre-shot routine, a post-shot routine. Do the same thing every time. Take every shot the same, whether this shot is for a million dollars or no one is looking. No matter what, do the same thing and you're gonna build consistency. If you practice for two hours, at the end of that two hours, you ask yourself, did I take every single shot seriously? As if the game was on the line, did I take every shot that seriously? And if you answered yes, your game is gonna improve. If you say no, you just say, you know, like sometimes I get down and you know, I make the ball and I just move into my next shot. If you do that a bunch, you know, your game is only gonna get so good because that's where talent comes in. Some people have the talent to get down to make the game look easy. Some people make the game look so easy, while other people try really hard and the game is still hard. If you have the talent to do that stuff, I still wouldn't recommend it, but you can get away with it. But if you wanna get consistent, you wanna fight through some of that lack of talent that you might have, that's what I do, is I try to be as consistent as possible. Hope it helps. Have any questions? Leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them all.